Hello, 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 and welcome, welcome, welcome to the featured I am your host, CJ3, or I am he. Man, I'm trying to get my dog on speaker to work so we can have the speaker going, but that's not happening right now. But we're going to keep this thing rolling because I got y'all here. Hello to everybody, man. Welcome to the featured. This is where we become intimate and get exclusive with our titles and our topics and our guests. And man, I'm so excited and so elated because tonight's show, you do not want to miss tonight's show. Tonight's show, talking to none other than my boy, the IBF, former IBF, light heavyweight champion of the world, my boy, Tavares Cloud, right here, the Thunder Cloud tonight on the feature right here, man. I'm so excited, so elated. Can't wait to get this thing here popping off. Hello to all my features out there. We got to get this thing rolling. Hello, hello. I hope all of y'all are having a wonderful time and everybody's good, man. Welcome to the show. For all those watching by way of YouTube, Twitch, and all everything else in between, man, I graciously, graciously appreciate y'all, man. Thank y'all for tuning in to the show. You have no idea what that means to me. For all those tuning in for the very first time, thank y'all for tuning in to the show. This is where we become intimate and become exclusive with our topics as well as our uh as uh, topics is enough clout. Oh, okay, I just want to make sure. Hold on tight, brother. We get to you in a minute. He already here, everybody. Just the champ is here. I just want to try to know the champ is here. So we're getting into this thing right now, man. So you already know you don't want to miss out on nothing. You already see we got this thing popping. Everything happens on the feature, man. Can't make this stuff up. My boy Tavares, you already see he already hit me up on the phone. He here. We ready. We just going to get into a few little things before we do anything. 
<laughs> I got to make sure that I uh, give you guys the update on what is going on in my world. If y'all want to be on the show, you know how to reach out to me. Hit me up on email at the feature with C J P. I'm on this thing every single night, Monday through Friday at 9 p.m. on Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitch. Please go download and feature us on all. Please go download and watch the replays and past Feature Friday's guests. There is a nugget of knowledge in each conversation. Trust me, you don't want to miss out on that opportunity. We here, man. This is where it all kicks off at, man, right here on the Feature. I can't wait to get this thing popping off with my homeboy, my partner in crime, my friend, my dog from all the way back from middle school, high school, my boy, my partner from Tally Ho, man, <laughs> representing the 850 well, no matter wherever he go, in the ring, across the world, my man, the former IBF, light heavyweight champion of the world, pro boxer, community advocate and activist, my brother, Tavares Cloud. What's going on, Thunder Cloud? How you doing, Cliff? Oh, good. Everything good. Everything good, man. Yes. Be on the show. Yes, sir, fam, bro. I appreciate you being on the show, man. What's been going on with you, dog? How everything feeling? Oh, everything good. You know, just working, getting, getting ready for this comeback. Okay. Uh, same as you know, staying focused, staying out of trouble. Absolutely, absolutely, big dog. You already know, man. We're so excited to have you on the show, man. First of all, thank you so much, brother, for doing this. A lot of people, man, listen. The folks that do know or don't know this brother, man, listen. I graciously, graciously appreciate this man spending his time, taking his time out, man, just to holler at me and holler at y'all on this show. Brick, bro, bro, I, I appreciate you, my brother. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, you know, I, I stay in the loop. night for you, bro. I like my feature Fridays, you know, as far as the ones that you may have seen or not. But just my show is just based in design just to, you know, feature my folks, man, that I have value in and that are of such value to me and I'm valuable to them in their lives and I'm appreciative of that. But, bro, man, this is us loving on you, man, paying you the respect and featuring you the way we post to, man, highlighting you and your career, my brother, and just all the awesome things you've done over the a period of time, Doc, and, and this is that opportunity, man, where, you know, you tell your story how you tell it, man, best way you can, and your story is not, it ain't even finished being written, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, so for those folks who do know you, you know, this ain't nothing but an extra love plug for them, and for those who don't know you, just for those folks just to get a little bit more acclimated with who you are, man, and Find out more about your story. For those boxing fans out there, for those who know boxing, love boxing, I mean, eat, sleep, shit, digest boxing like this, you already know the, the, the legacy of this brother, man, so it ain't even like no game. So, bro, we're just going to get right into it. This is a big-ass three, three-way conversation with everybody in the world right now listening to us, all right? Okay, okay. You, you, uh, you got all, all people taking questions about why you, why you doing the you know what? I you know what? We're going to get into that later on, brother. If they got questions, they more than half welcome to drop them things off in the ch- in the comment box. If anything, man, y'all more than welcome to say something. But no, dog, it's just a conversation between me and you. Okay. They, li- all right, all right. they, they listening and learning tonight. Okay. 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 Okay
Okay. There it is, my brother. So, off rip, where you from? I'm from the Tallahassee and Quincy, Florida area. Oh, man. I, 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 I got to explain why I claim both cities. Break it down for the I folks mean, that don't know. I, I claim both cities, Tallahassee and Quincy, because I grew up in both cities. Okay. I went to elementary school. And I went to elementary school in Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. I did my my uh, eighth grade year. Hold on, is it eighth? No, it's the sixth grade. <laughs> it's been a long time. I guess I did my sixth grade year at NIMS. I started off my sixth grade year at NIMS. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I moved to Quincy, Florida for seventh, eighth, ninth, and then tenth grade. And I came back to Tallahassee, went to Rickards for 11th and the 12th grade, and and uh, that's why I claimed both cities. You know, I got I you. got a lot of family in the Quincy area, so that's why I, I, I claimed both cities. Absolutely. Totally understand, man, and and rightfully so. You got to give 8-5. That's 8 five vote no matter where you go. So yeah. Tallahoe and Quincy stand up representing our very own to voice thunder cloud. Now, man, you already done mentioned it. Your high school experience. Now, when you was in Quincy, what high school you went to? Well, I went to Shanks. I went to Shanks for the ninth grade, and I went to GTI, the Gas and Technical Institute. Okay. Uh, that's like a trade school. Right. Uh, high, high school, but you could take a trade. Trade, right. I did that one for the 10th grade, and then 11th and 12th, I went to Rutgers. The best. That's where I started my boxing career in the tenth grade. Wow. My boxing career, so I moved to moved back to Tallahassee, so I could be to the gym every day. That's why I moved in with Alonzo Johnson, uh, the, the former dean of uh, Rutgers. Absolutely, and for those that know about uh, Rutgers High School, I mean, we had some real, real boxers and fighters. Um, out of that school, am I not wrong? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we'd have had some boxers, boy. We'd have had some real true fighters come about that thing. And Johnson, he will make one at you. So shout out to my dog Alonzo Johnson yeah. for taking my Robert dog. Oh, oh yeah, Travis Robert Trail. Oh yeah, good. All them boys went to Rickers. All them have. Yeah. Flourishing pro boxing careers, man. That's what's up, man. So you already know the Rick not only produces great football talent and basketball talent, but we also produce and baseball talent. I gotta make sure I make sure I put out that baseball talent. But boxing, oh, we holding boxing down too, apparently. So I'm trying to let y'all know what's the best high school in the world. <clears throat> None other than James S. Rickers High School. We'll keep on going about that. <laughs> Rick is all day. All day, baby. You ought to know straight from the south side, fam. So so you, yeah. you, you so you speak of the high school and your high school experience, meeting Mr. Johnson and whatnot and all that good stuff. So after high school, you you uh -huh. you pretty much stuck in into boxing. Boxing became you. Right. Boxing <clears throat> after high school. After high school, uh you know, uh, I didn't go to, I, I made it to the, the Eastern Olympic, Olympic trials, mm -hmm. but I, I didn't go and compete. Uh, and um, let's see. So so what I did, I, I just turned pro. I turned pro after I didn't make it to the Olympics. And um, I, I had... Uh, I, I was with my wife now. We've been married for 15 years. Eileen, Eileen Gonzalez, mm -hmm. Mrs. Cloud, mm -hmm. Mrs. Cloud. Now we've been right. married for 15 years. Right. So, so she she got pregnant with uh, my daughter. Well, I I impregnated her. <laughs> <laughs>
Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that, that's, that's kind of how my career got started after, after high school. That's what's up. I went head first in the, in the pro game. That's what's up, man. Because, um, because as an amateur, you did fight in the national amateur championship, though, right in 2002. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, uh, I, I finished number two in the country in Las Vegas, 2002. Um, you know, I, I, I lost to, uh, so, Showtime Curtis Stevenson, you know, he, he was like 178. Right, and, right. And, uh, you know, but my toughest fight was the night before, so, you know, but it, it, it was a good fight. I finished number two in the country, and let me see, after that, that was 2002, after that I went to the U.S. Challenge. I think I came back ranked number number four in the country. I was on the national team. Mm -hmm. The national team is basically the top four in the country in in each weight class, and they they can call you to fight international competition at any point in time. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, I, I was on the national team for a while. Uh, I never really got to compete, but I was on the national team getting, getting a stipend every month from the uh, U.S. Olympic team. And um, I think I, I, I won the uh, the state Golden Gloves one more time before I turned pro. I think the state Golden Gloves was, was my last fight uh, where, where I made it to the Eastern Olympic Trials. And... Uh, I, I didn't compete in the Eastern Olympic Trials. I, I just turned pro. Wow, man, that's amazing. That's crazy, bro. That is crazy. Now, when you turned pro back in 04, you had your first fight against Lewis Reyes. Yeah. And that was a four-round fight, but you TKO'd him in the third round. Right. <laughs> Now, yeah, for, yeah. for that being your first victory as a pro and all that good stuff, man, what did it feel like to have that kind of victory, let alone, you know, be that, that your knockout, a TKO for your first first fight? Like, what was that like? Well, it was when, when I turned pro and I had that first fight in Ocala, mm -hmm. uh, I when, when I put on the gloves, when I put on the gloves, I, I just started laughing because I actually couldn't believe they was going to let me hit somebody with gloves. <laughs> right. yeah, it, it, it was my first time using the, the pro gloves, and they're a lot different from the amateur gloves. Right. And uh, you know, it, it was oh my god! <laughs> I, I, just I, I just, I just kept hitting him, and uh, he went down. Now they, I, I was supposed to lose that fight because you know a lot of guys they they don't win fights uh, against guys with. Undefeated guys with three or four pro fights in right. their, their pro debut, but you know I, I had pretty good amateur experience, so mm -hmm. you know I went in there and beat him. But it, it was a good fight. Uh, I'm not in the mind. I was just on the road. I was just on the road. Wow, brother, that's that's crazy. That's crazy, bro. So. Uh, after that amateur turning pro, everything, man, you do all this. How did you know? That you was ready, you know, before you had that first battle. How did you know that you was just ready to go pro? Uh, I knew I was ready to go pro because we we always trained together. Mm -hmm. uh, at the Tallahassee Fight Tigers gym, mm -hmm. the trainer Lago Jones, he always trained us to be professional fighters, right? Pro fighters, you know, we always trained for uh, the endurance. And uh, just, just the mentality, it was it was kill or be killed. Nice guys finish dead in his legs. Right. You know, I, I was ready to go cold. My uh, my mind state, my physical fitness, uh, my my youth. You know, plus my amateur background, I, I was just ready to go. I was I was ready to cause damage. I mean, I I knew because. I have been put through the gauntlet of, you know, the Tallahassee Fight Tigers for six years. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was a pretty rough, pretty rough uh, amateur amateur program a lot of had going on right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the state of Florida, they call them Coach Hale Raider. 
Right. You know, it, it, it ain't a, it ain't a boxing event that Alonzo ain't been kicked out of in the state of Florida, <laughs> you know, on the back for his fighters. Right. You know, we, we we always came in tip top shape. You know, we was most all power punches. Uh, and we we had a mentality. You know, we we went and talk to people when, when we come when we went to fights. You know, we was just deep and you know when it's time to fight, we get in the ring, we whoop your ass, and, and then yeah, you we go and you go home. <laughs> and, that's, and that's how it was. And uh, you know, he he trained us for the for the pro game. We was ready. Yeah. And uh, I I knew that in 2004, I could be in one of the uh, top amateurs in the country, mm -hmm. being on the national team and going to all of these Olympic training camps, California, and Lake Placid, and, and, and places like that. I, I knew I was ready. I, I knew I was going to cause damage. That's what's up, brother. That's what's up. Now, bro, with so much hype and buzz you built, um, as you was knocking people out faster than a stroke of lightning. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm saying, bro, because you was knocking them out, bro, that just bringing the thunder. So, so, and, and it's because you went on this 19 and 0 run, dog. Like you had this 19 and 0 win streak, 18 knockouts around this time. Like before, yeah. before fighting for the IBF light heavyweight belt against Clinton Woods. Now, yeah. now when you fought Clinton, what was your mindset and motivation for that fight? You got the title on the line. Like, what was what was your mind at at this time? Oh, Clinton Woods, Clinton Woods. Uh, that fight right there, he got like he was Just during that whole particular fight, man, like just remember it. I remember watching it. And uh, this is crazy because my dog was up for the IBL. Like, this is that boy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so to watch that, man, and to see the end results and just knowing how, you know, the point game was and how you was, I mean, you handled your own in, in the ring, bro. Like, long down, like, like let's not, like, get it twisted. Like, you handled your own in the ring. Now, yeah. When you won the title and became the new IBF light heavyweight champion of the world from Tallahassee, Florida, <laughs> what went through your mind? Like, was it surreal? Was you living a dream? Like, what happened? Like, what was your mindset? Well, well, when I finished that fight, when I finished that fight, I got out the room. I, I got out the ring. I, wow. I collapsed. Wow. I collapsed. I, 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 was, I was dog sick because. You know, I just, everything, I, I left everything in the ring. Right. Like, everything I had, I just left it in there. Like, I, I, all the emotions, all everything. Like, I didn't have nothing left. So, they got me back to the room, you know, and the next morning I woke up, 
I, I had the belt. I mean, I remember getting the belt and walking back to the room. You know, I just knew that I was, I, I was sick. I was throwing up. Like, you know, maybe I lost too much weight in the fight. Mm -hmm. Overexerted myself. You know, things like that. But you know, we we laugh about that now. Uh, me and Lonzo, and, and he he say, man, I never seen somebody. Uh, Give it all they had, like literally just give it all they had, leave everything in the ring. I said, man, I ain't have a one chance. I had to make sure I, I had to kick the door down, you know. So, but the next morning I woke up, I had the IBL title, you know, I was world champion, and me and my daughter went down and ate some breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you win that thing, dog. No. That's how you do that. That's how you do that. That's how you do that, bro. Now, you yourself, now, you had to defend your title a few times, too, now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you had about four, five times you had to hold that thing down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know. I, I had that target on my back. Yeah. Yeah, you was a target. You was a serious yeah. target. Yeah. Yeah, man, because you was, you was knocking them out and handing them out. Just knocking them down, signing them up, handing them out one by one. You know what I'm saying? And um, all of them, all of those fights that you had to defend, by far the biggest defense. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, which was by far one of the biggest fights of the century, bro. Let alone, I feel in your career was the uh, IBF light heavyweight champion title. Um, that you had to go up against Bernard Hopkins, old B Hop. Yeah. Now, when this fight was set, what was the motivation behind setting this fight? Well, the, the motivation behind uh, Hopkins uh, won that fight. I mean, he he was an older fighter. He was an older fighter, but Hopkins Hopkins had the name. Right. Hopkins had the name. Um, Hopkins, he, he had been there, done that. And, you know, if if you can beat Hopkins, you know that that's a pretty good notch under your belt. That's a real good so, notch under your belt, brother. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it, 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 what, what, what's your... I said that's a that's a real big notch under your belt. You you fight him and knock him out. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's a pretty good notch under your belt. Right. So, you know, we we wanted to get that fight, but uh, when I was with Don King, as long as I was with Don King, I could never get that fight with Bernard Hopkins mm -hmm. uh, because Bernard Hopkins did really didn't want to do business with Don King. Right. He had been a Don King fighter and he got away from Don. So he, he never really wanted to deal with Don King again. Right. The only way, the only way that I ended up getting that fight with Bernard Hopkins is I went and teamed up. I went over there to Houston and teamed up with Jay Prince, the the, the CEO, the the, the farming CEO, CEO of Rap a Lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I teamed up with James Prince, went over there to the fifth room with the Rap a Lot, and uh sign with Jay Prince so so Jay Prince could advise me. Right. You know, uh and and uh help make some of these fights that I was trying to get him to go a lot smoother because he he was a better better businessman and you know he, he got his own style uh and it wasn't the style of Don King and he could make things happen that, you know, Normally, wouldn't happen for you because you know Jake Prince is, is a man with power and, and respect. Right. You know, in, in the streets as well as the the, the business boxing game. Right. Right. He got right. respect all the way around. So thanks, thanks to Jake Prince, I was able to get that fight with Bernard Hopkins. If it wasn't for him, I would have never got that fight. Wow. Yeah. So. You know, with, with, with training for that fight, once I got the fight, mm -hmm. once I got the fight with uh, Bernard Hopkins, I was in California. We, we, uh, I went to do my medicals. <clears throat> you got to do the eye test and the blood test. Right. The physicals and stuff with, with the doctors over there. So I, I went 
when I went to get the, the eye test, they told me that I needed to have LASIK eye surgery. Wow. This was like, this was like a, a month before the fight. Wow. Like one month before the fight. Mm. And after you have LASIK eye surgery, you, you can't do no sparring for a month. Right. So, and it just so happened that, it just so happens that in Big Battle, Abel Sanchez, Abel Sanchez is, is the same trainer that trains uh, Triple G. Mm -hmm. um, I think Triple G left him, but uh, I, I was up there sparring with uh, Triple G. Uh, had a couple rounds with Tony Harrison, uh, a, a, a couple guys up there, man. Uh, even Ronda Rousey was up there. Wow. Um, and uh, Abel Sanchez, he, he took me, took me to the. Physical the stuff they said I had to have laser eye surgery. I couldn't spend that month, and we we do our sparring the last month of the training camp. Mm -hmm. You know, so that kind of threw me off as far as getting ready for the office fight. You know, my my career really uh, it it ended when I was sitting in the chair. I was looking in the doctor's face, and they said, "No, you're not going to be able to fight." You know, you, you got to have laser eye surgery. Wow. And I was like, oh, hold yeah, oh, yeah. up, you know. Wow. Uh, we we, we got to do something, you know, like, you know, I had the money in my pocket. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, how much is the laser eye surgery? They was like, this, that. And I paid it. You do one eye one day, the next eye the next day. And then you go and heal up for a month. Mm -hmm. So I, I took that fight with... With no no real spar, mm -hmm. you know. I, I did some rounds with Triple G, and but you know, man, Triple G wasn't going real hard because uh, you know two weight classes bigger than Triple G. Right. And uh, you know, so a lot of fighters would would have not took that fight because they they told me that if I got injured, I could possibly go blind. Wow. You know. But it, it, it's the thing, you know, you, you, you know, I had to make a decision, like, fuck it, I ain't going blind. I'm going with it. <laughs> you know, you, know you, you gotta take chances, man. You gotta right. take chances. You know, like, like Clyde say, you, you gotta take risks. Right. You know, and you, you definitely have to take risks. And if I would not, the fight is that I felt that if I would not fought him, when I did fight him, I would have never got that opportunity again. Because I knew Bernard Hopkins was retiring soon. You know, so I took the fight. I didn't get the decision. You know, but I, I'm not blind either. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not blind. You know, you, some things you just got to take as a lesson, not a loss. You know, and uh, you got to make sure you're physical and you're physical health and stuff stay up to date and that you stay right, stay healthy and uh, stay prepared out here, you know, because it, it can not cost you, but, you know, the, the ones that are strong, they'll, they'll find a way to get past everything to keep them. Wow, man, that's real, bro. You said a mouthful right there, my brother, man. So, watching the fight, man, the fight went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, like, <laughs> in the fight with them, Oprah. Okay, so what insight can you give my listeners and viewers about that fight that most people may not know? Because you spoke about the, you know, the, the the LASIK surgery and everything, but were there any other elements that you could think of that may have taken place within that that fight that you know a lot of people don't may not may not know about? Yeah, I mean, I mean, boxing, it, it, it's a lot of things I, I, can, I can say about that. Um, boxing, it should be a lifestyle. It right. should be a lifestyle. And, and if you're a fighter, boxing should be a lifestyle for you. What I mean by that is that you shouldn't be getting way overweight. You, you, you shouldn't be smoking and drinking and partying and women and all of this stuff, uh, you know, before the fight, in between fights, 
You need to stay close to your weight. Stay close <laughs> to your weight. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe no more than 10 or 15 pounds past your weight. You know, um, um, you just, you, you, you have to keep your mind right. You, yeah. know, you, you have to live a, a, a stress, stress free life. Right. You know, uh, you, you don't need to be worried about other things when you're inside of the ring. You got to train hard. You, you don't need to be worried about are you in shape? Are you not in shape? You know, it is so many things, man. But if, if boxing is a lifestyle for you, you know, I'm going to say it like this. Like, let's, let's, let's say if, if you work on... During the off season, if you work on one thing a day, that's going to benefit you in the sport of boxing. That's that's kind of like making boxing a lifestyle. If, if, if you watch what you eat, mm -hmm. don't put on a lot of weight, stay out of trouble, stay away from the courts and stuff like that, and just focus a little bit on boxing every day. It don't have to be 100%. Right. But just make it part of your part of your uh religion part of your lifestyle just like going to church on, on sunday you right know, just like taking a bath you know you have to do a little bit of this every day right you know it, it'll make any fight any fight that you may ever have a lot a lot easier man we're talking to my main man i former ibf light heavyweight champion of the world, Tavares Thunder Cloud. Man, from this B-Hop fight, man, um, this is a two-part question. What do you feel that that fight with B-Hop did for your career? And I'm asking because after the B-Hop uh, fight, you kind of suffered two more losses, and that brought the total to three. Um, then you took like a six-year hiatus from boxing so uh -huh. what did that fight from b hop what did you learn from that and why the the long delay as far as you know you wanting to fight again well the, the, the b hop fight it, it caused me to do uh, a lot of regrouping and and, and recollection uh -huh. but Don King, and uh, I told 
him that uh, I was coming back. Mm-hmm. I was coming back. And, you know, I didn't want to fight for Don King no more. Right. And they told me, they told me that I still had a little time left in my contract. Mm-hmm. So, doing while, while, the, while the contract was still, the, the time was still running on the contract. Right. Um, they didn't get me any fights while the time was still running on the contract. So the contract is fired. Wow. So, so the contract is fired. It's null and void. Mm-hmm. After the contract expired, because Don King never gave me a formal written release, which hmm. is something that other promoters want to see. If you get right. Don King, if Don King has been your promoter, they want to see a formal written release that you have no more legal dealings. You are no longer legally buying it to Don King because Don King has a reputation for uh, stopping fights and coming coming back and stopping boxing shows. He did it with Ricardo Mayorga uh, back when he was about to fight Sugar Shane and, you know, all of this stuff. So Don would to give me a release, <clears throat> a, a written release. And uh, so a lot of promoters were scared to deal with me over, over, over some years. So, you know, I just stayed in the gym and, and kept training. You know, and, you know, just kept telling myself that I'm going to find my break. You know, I'm going to find somebody that want to deal. Right. You know, but it, it wasn't until, you know, I, I did get a lawyer and, um, you know, go through some legal paperwork where he can prove that I was no longer legally binded to that Don King contract that, you know, some, some other fighters, some other promoters would, wanted to deal with me. Right. to the comeback, who are you liking out here as a fighter right now?
for certain things, but what I do want to know is, um, what's your philosophy, like, now compared to when you first started? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I'm coming with stuff now. Yeah. (laughs) When I first started, my philosophy was kill or be killed. Right. Right. You know, but it, it ain't it ain't so uh extreme no more, man. 
I got you. I got you. <laughs> With your homie, that's what it is. I mean, not... I mean, it's there, but only when it's appropriate. And only when it's going to benefit me. <laughs> Absolutely, big dog. It, it ain't gone. I mean, the, the aggression, it, it ain't gone. But only when it's, when it's the right place for it. Right. Right, right, right. So, what have you learned now as a more experienced fighter that you'll take in the ring with you, you know, once you, you know, make that matriculation into the ring again? Sometimes they got to take a couple of them jabs before they get that, that thunder on them. Right. right. It, 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 I, I want to set the power up. <laughs> <laughs> I want to set it up. <laughs> oh, boy. I love it, dog. I love it. Nah, bro. We done already done let the cat out the bag. So it's time to go ahead and let our listeners and viewers and watchers and tuner inners know what's going on, bro. On November 20th, it's official. My dog is back in the ring. Yes, sir. I'll be back in the ring. November 20th at the Ocean Center. Man, listen, for those who try to be at this fight, yeah. listen, this is this is a promotion by my boy Lank the King, okay? Yeah. Lank is one of the top promoters in boxing. He's one of the money team with Money Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather. He's one of his main promoters. Listen, yeah. this is not no Rudy Poot ass fight. I want y'all to know this. This is coming to Daytona Beach, and it's already been told and said that Mayweather will be at the fight. Yeah, he will he'll be at the fight and the after party. And the after party. Yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah. and I heard Rick Ross going to be at the after party at the fight ringside. So, yeah. listen, my boy, listen, we're getting back in this thing after the hiatus. We, and we're fighting Ryan Soff. I mean, I'm sure, I'm hoping you beat him just like his last name sounds. <laughs> and you can quote me on that. This is my show. Okay? <laughs> beat him soft. Beat him soft, bro. So, but man, listen. I got to let the people know because I'm giving them something they don't know about right now. But you're finding out about this thing right here on my show. If y'all try to be in Daytona, well, if you in Daytona Beach, Florida, November 20th, 
This is a perfect, perfect weekend. This is an awesome time frame. This is a Friday night. All I know is that after my featured Friday night, <laughs> I'll be doing the show from a disclosed location near Daytona Beach area. I will be at that fight. I will be at the fight and the after party. I'm coming with you. I'm kicking it. I'm there. Bruh, I, it's official. Y'all here, right here live. Please go. If you want tickets, want more information about the fight, go online at www.lankthekeng.com. That's L A E K, the king.com. Man, listen, bruh, I'm so excited for this and for you and for everything that's going on, but listen, I'm so crunk. <laughs> but. Yeah, man. I mean, he, he out of Memphis. Memphis, Tennessee, and he, he's hustling. Unbelievable. He almost hustling harder than me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lake, Lake doing good. Lake doing his shit, man. Yeah, man. I see it, man. Lake, Lake is well connected, man. I'm, and it's and it's odd. It's funny and crazy too, cause we all got some of the same connections, the same people and whatnot involved. Right over here in Tallahassee. Shout out to my boy Stunt Junior. Stanley Walker Jr., so you already know. Yes, man, so we got all kind of stuff going crazy on that. Everybody got to know about this Tallahassee connection, man, because it's really, really deep and intense. Folks don't know that the magic that you need in anything resides right here in Tallahassee, Florida, man. Need I say more about certain things that have taken place right here in this state of Florida, especially when the Bushes was running for the election. Everything got halted and messed up because of this state. And everything happened right here in this city. Yep. So I'm just trying to tell you, man, wait, the world don't run unless it comes through Tallahassee. So you already know we put my boy after a six year hiatus back in the ring on prime time, baby, against Ryan Soft, November 20th, right in Daytona Beach, Florida, dog, at the Ocean Center. Oh, it's going down, bro. I'm so excited, man. Can't wait, bro. Oh, man, Co main event for the fight. It's an eight rounder? Yeah, it's an eight rounder. And uh, after this fight, uh, I think they got a couple more dates. They got about eight more dates after this fight. And then after that, they got the next one after that. And then after that, they got the next one after that. And then after that, they got the next one after that. And then after that, they got the next one after that. And then after that, they got the next one after that. And then after that, they got the next one after that. And then after that, they got the next one after that. And then after that, they got the next one after that. And then after that, they got the next one after that. And then after that, they got the next one after um, this is going to be my first fight back. Get, get the rush off. Get a good tune up. Yeah. And uh, perhaps it could be my 20th knockout. If not, I ain't worried about it. You keep it moving. I will get that 20th knockout. <laughs> Absolutely. But, uh, you know, hey, it, it's just the first step of many to, to the comeback. Man, bro, and I'm so happy to be a part of the comeback, bro, because everybody, ESPN, outright, anybody who could have got this interview conversation right now up front years ago, I got it right here on my shit, right here on the feature, dog. I'm telling you, boy, y'all better recognize my show, boy. I, I put the guys, I put the guys, anybody from the 850 area. I'd rather do interviews with y'all guys than to do, I don't care if it's from Foxy News, from, from whoever. I'd rather get an interview <laughs> to uh, some, somebody from the 850. Right here, fam. Right here. You here, right here live, talking to my boy, former and yet soon to be, again, IBF, head light heavyweight champion of the world, my bro, my dog, Tavares Cloud. Man, hey, now as an activist, because you're very active in the streets, in your community, especially where we from, South City, South City stand up. So as an activist, bro, and 
you know I'm going to definitely make sure that you get in contact and we're going to make some close connections with the South City Foundation. I just want to throw that out there. But okay. uh, but just you doing your own thing, man, as far as you giving back, you know, your time and your knowledge back to the community and stuff that you got going on, bro, as, you know, continue to build upon yourself and your brand. Do you, and this just a, you know, man-to-man question at the same time, just your own personal opinion, too. Do you believe boxing could help some lives out there of those looking for a way to a better life out of the hood? Yeah, I do. Uh, I don't know if it's going Absolutely. Oh, man. Yeah. So, 
You know, it, it's not just it's not just sports. Uh, I think it, it, it needs to be. Uh, we, we have to make sure that that the proper philosophy is being taught in the households as well. You know, uh, of, of the of the people in you know areas of poverty. You know, things like that. You know, it, it, it don't it don't cost you nothing to teach your child the right thing. Absolutely, you're right, bro. You know, you, you don't need a master's degree or a bachelor's degree to uh, teach your child the right thing. You know, tell them not to do this and not to do that. Right. You know, exactly. Shit and not, that ain't, you know, you you ain't gotta have no 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 degrees. Mothers don't need <laughs> degrees. Fathers don't need degrees to raise raise your child. Man, you speaking knowledge right now, boy. Talking to my boy, former IBF light heavyweight champion of the world, Tavares Thundercloud. Cloud, let me ask you this, dog. What's your message to those aspiring young fighters out there, your young boxers who are listening and watching the show right now? What's your What's your key message for these cats, man? What's your What's your negative uh, knowledge of negative knowledge right now? Hey man, keep training, stay in shape, study them fights, uh, repetition, repetition. Keep believing in yourself. Don't, I mean, stay focused, man. Don't, don't never let nobody tell you that you cannot be the best. You, you, you are the best. You know, uh, just, just keep pushing. Just keep pushing. Even when hard times come, man, just know that 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 that's just a bump in the road. You know what I'm saying? Just 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 get up, keep pushing, keep pushing, man. Now, it sounds simple. It sounds simple, but it's real powerful. It's oh, just man. like water. <laughs> <laughs> if you got enough water, nobody can pour than you. <laughs> oh man, that's real. <laughs> By the water, bro. Yeah. That's real, bro. Man, you hear, man, bro. Tell the people how they can follow you, find you, all that good stuff. Okay, I'm. Uh, you, you can follow me on Instagram at Tavares Thunder. Uh, you can So yeah, you bet you need you need a fan page, bro. Yeah, I need to get a fan page. Yeah, uh, I need to get it get it set up. But uh, no, I'm gonna people send me the request. Yeah, I accept them. I I just accept everybody uh, unless it's you know somebody on some craziness or something like that. I don't want to accept you. That's what it is, bro. I'm, 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 I'm taking. I'm gonna take full responsibility on starting your fan page, bro. That's what I'm doing. I'm helping you out. I think, I think it has me set up, but I, I don't even spend enough time on Facebook. I got you, bro. You know. We're going to go ahead and look into that thing for you, big dog. You already know. Yeah, yeah, man, bro. I got you, bro. You already know. Talking about boy Tavares Thundercloud. Hey. Far, this has been fun, man. Huh? This has been fun, bro. I can't understand. I said this has been real fun, man. Hey, happy birthday to Sister Cloud over there. Oh, yeah. Happy but, birthday, Ozzy. Happy 30-something uh, birthday. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, bro, before I let you go, I got to put you through this right here. Now, this probably be the biggest fight of your life right here with this one. This is my, my segment of my show that I call Would You Rather? And this is when you... Tell me, a, I ask you a few questions, series of questions, and you tell me, would you rather this, or would you rather that? All right? Okay. So here we go. Would you rather 
fight for the IBF championship again now, or would you rather go back and beat B Hop's ass and retain the IBF belt you had then? Now. Okay. Yeah, because it gets greater later. Oh, man, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it gets greater later. I like I that. More money now. Oh, oh, boy, absolutely. It definitely gets greater later, bro. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. My man, would you rather fight kangaroo or fight a gorilla? And they both can box. Um, <laughs> I think I'm gonna go with the fight that kangaroo man. <laughs> I, I fight the kangaroo because you know that gorilla. I don't know. That's he pretty strong. Oh yeah, he coming with it, Doc. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the Donkey Kong man. <laughs> <laughs> You just keep it real, bro. Okay, okay. Yeah. Would you rather take an uppercut or an overhand right? Uh, mm. I'm going to take the uppercut. And you took a few punches in your day, I know. I, I, think, I think I'm going to take the uppercut. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now is it, is it is it much more powerful going down than coming up? Well, that, that overhand right, you, mm -hmm. you, you can't really see it. Mm. You know, so it, it, it can hit you on top of the head, but on the chin, I know I can take a good shot on the chin. Okay, you got a chin. The uppercut normally gonna hit you on the chin. Yeah. But you know, on top of the head, you got your temple, you got your you know, the sun of your head, so Ooh. you get hit way up there, man, you don't know where that punch comes from. And, you know, it, it might put you down. You know, you, you can hide the, 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 the overhand right. It, yeah. it can be hidden. Yeah. It can be hidden. The uppercut can, too. But the uppercut is going to hit me somewhere where I'm kind of used to being hit at. Right. Okay. Okay. I, I know I can take that. Okay. I got you. Now, would you... Go 12 rounds. Would you rather go 12 rounds with former opponent you lost to or go 12 rounds with President Trump? <laughs> <laughs> You go 12 with Trump. I, I go 12 with Trump. There it is. There it is. There it is. And last one, my brother, with everything that's happening, I know you are a huge advocate for the streets, let alone a lot of the crazy stuff that's happening going on out here with these police brutalities and killings and just how racism in America is all viewed right now. Yeah. This one is impactful with all of that because I know you stand up for a lot of people, including women kids and everybody else out there, especially with African-American people. So let me ask you this. Would you rather, if you had to fight for anything, would you rather fight for Breonna Taylor or fight for America? Breonna Taylor or fight for America? Not a trick question at all, my brother. There it is. There it is. Well, we hold it down. What I do know is that a black woman gave birth to the whole whole civilization. Oh man! So we fight for Breonna Taylor on this thing. That's the that's the the portal for every race on the world. Oh 
Oh man. Well, we already know we're going in that direction. My brother, I appreciate you. I love you. I thank you, man. All the long, brother's been fun as hell, man. I appreciate you. Everybody give it up for my boy Tavares Cloud, former IBF light heavyweight champion, other world, pro boxer, community activist, my brother. Hey, you already know what's going down. Can't wait till November 20th versus South in Daytona Beach at the Ocean Center, man. I can't wait, bro. I'm excited for you. I'm so proud of you. From all the years to this moment right now, my brother, it's all for something, man. And, hey, I'm just happy to finally be a part of your journey, man. So, uh, oh, man. Hey, it's going down, bro. I can't wait, big dog. My man, I appreciate you bringing the love and the clout right here, fam. Oh, yeah. Hey, we'll, hey, man, hey, hey absolutely, bro. I love you, man. We'll be in touch. All right, boy. Love you too, man. Boy, talking to my dog, the one and only Tavares Cloud. Man, give me some heart, some likes, some love right now, please. For that conversation, man. That's my dude, Tavares Cloud. Man, listen, this thing here. Um, this is this is what I'm talking about. This is the type of stuff that we need. We got to have this right here, man. This ain't no game. My boy, Tavares Cloud, right here on the feature, dog. You already know what it is. For those who don't know what's happening, what's taking place, it's going on right here, man. I've been trying to tell y'all, but y'all don't want to hear nobody, man. But it is really happening right here, dog. So, yeah, dog, I'm excited. Can't, can't, can't do nothing but be excited about the situation that's happening. Can't wait, man. Wow, my boy. Hey, if y'all don't know what's happening, one more time. Tavares Cloud versus Ryan South. November 20th. In Daytona Beach. At the Ocean Center. Coming up, my boy, Tavares Cloud. Right here, man. On the feature. I can't believe this, man. Like, this is... Really how this is going down tonight. Can't knock it. We ain't going to knock it. It is what it is. And we just going to keep on rolling and keep on enjoying life because this is what life is bringing us. We ain't got no choice but to keep on rolling in it, man. So, this is how it is. I can't help it. If you guys want to be on the feature, man, you know how to holler at me. Hit me up on the feature. Call me. Email me, thefeature.cj3 at gmail.com, or contact me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Feature with CJ3. I'm on this thing every single night, Monday through Friday at 9 p.m. Go subscribe now to the channel if you have not. Go subscribe right now. You're going to be so mad at yourself if you have not subscribed to the channel on YouTube and Twitch. We right there. Please go and do so. There's so smart when you do so. And go listen. Go download and watch the replays of all our past Feature Fridays guests. There is a nugget of knowledge in each conversation. Ah, man, it's been such a cool night tonight, man. It's been a cool time, man. If y'all having a good time, man, I appreciate y'all tuning in. Give me some likes, some hearts right now. Just a little bit over right now. Now, normally... Around this time of the show, I would do my featured song of the night. And for some odd ass reason, this isn't possible. Because I am trying 
to load it in this particular system and uh, either the Bluetooth ain't uh, connecting or whatnot, but I'm not going to get into it. So it's okay. I don't want to play no music tonight. But I do want to tell y'all this. For those who have been watching my show consistently with me since the very first day that I brought this thing to full flourishing, when I said that I was going to start my show May 1st, I only started out doing this show one time a week. And that was literally just on Friday when the show started out just as Feature Fridays. Then all of a sudden, that same night from that very first show that I did, I was told that I should go ahead and do my show every night. Why? Because if you're trying to get out there, you're trying to bring yourself, and you're trying to be heard, try to be seen, and you're trying to get on, you have to be different from everybody else that's already doing exactly what it is that you want to do. So I had to come different. I had to come with a different approach. I had to come with a different mindset, game plan, approach to the whole live stream, podcast, live, or late night show world. I wanted to c compress all of those things together to bring the product that I bring to you every single day. Started back in Jane in July, June, May, June, May, June. I did five weeks in June, yeah, in May. Um, just one show per week. It was five weeks in May. And every Friday, there was a show. Every Friday. I didn't hit Monday through Friday. It was just Friday. So that was five shows. But that following month, June 1st, kicking off on June 1st, I took the liberty of starting my show every single night, every single day at 9 p.m. Whether I gave you a couple of minutes, a couple of segments, uh, you, you had me, you had Cliff Jackson, CJ3, all to yourself every night at 9 p.m. And we went for however long, and we had a good time. We had great conversations, and, and we had great topics. We had great interviews, because Feature Friday never changed. It only just became officially Friday. And all of a sudden, my whole title of my show changed, The Feature with Cliff Jackson III. And as I embark on month after month from May, June, July, August, September to now October, I look at all of those weeks and I look at all of those months. For the past six months, I have been giving y'all me every single day. And if I have ever missed the show, no. But I know I've been late for a few because I have damn sure went to sleep on you motherfuckers. Because I be sleeping too. <laughs> but at the end of the day, just keep it real. I have never missed the show. And tonight, on a very high note and a very great dear friend of mine, and just the whole complete great show all around. Tonight is my hundredth episode of the feature. Yes, 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 yes. You people, all of y'all, my folks, my fans, my features, all of y'all. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. This is the hundredth episode of the featured man. I've been doing this show a hundred times. I don't know if I've done a lot of things in my life a hundred times. I don't know if I've done a hundred of anything, but to know that I have given you guys myself a hundred days of my life, a hundred days through this quarantine and this COVID madness, a hundred days through the police brutality, the racism, the the injustice that we constantly keep seeing. A hundred days of me bringing sports world to you, sports information. A hundred days of me going through let goals and let downs and setbacks and backstabbings. A hundred days of me figuring out what I'm going to do for my show day by day. A hundred days of making sure that wherever I'm at, I leave there immediately to make sure that I go to my destination where my studio is and to make sure that I do a show for you guys every single night. Whether I have one person, 100 people, two people, 200 people, whoever is watching my show, whether they're watching it live or they watch the replay, I just hope you never want to miss my show. So, happy 100. 
for my show, The Feature. Happy 100th episode. I'm excited as hell to even know that this is even possible and this is something that we've experienced together. Yes, people, you can do the math yourself. I did five shows in May and I've done five days a week for the past six months. Well, for the past five months. So, yeah, y'all do the math, man. We here. We are here. We are here. We are here. 100 episode, man. So, what can I say? Now it's time for another one of them CJ3 stories. This is the part of the show where I give a true story of the topic or the guest of the show. And tonight's guest, Tavares Cloud, Tavares Thundercloud. I got so many stories I could give on my breath, but none more that sticks out in my mind than this. My boy, shout out to my South City friends and homies and family, man. Shout out to y'all. One of those names, Boohead. You may not hear a nigga new name Boohead in your neighborhood, but South City has one. And my boy Boohead, shout out here, principal in in uh, Atlanta, Georgia now, <clears throat> doing great things. Um, I remember he was telling about Cloud. He was like, man, you remember Tavares Cloud? And I was like, no, I don't remember Tavares. He was like, man, you know Cloud. He lives in South City, man, go to Rickers, went to Rickers. I was like, nah, dog. He was like, bruh, he a big time boss, dog. You might want to check him out. I was like, never heard of him. Until one day I had to go back in my mind and remember, he was like, man, you was at the house when he came up that bitch one day. It was all kicking and chilling. And he said, bruh, I'm going to be a big time boxer, bruh. I'm going to do his boxing shit. And. I was like, yeah, I remember that guy. He was like, no, that's the same dude. And I was like, stop. And he was like, yes, that's him, Tavares. That's, he's doing his thing. And I remember that conversation. Like, I remember being on Boo Hill Porch that day as a kid. And Tavares, I remember him. He said, man, I'm going to be the biggest boxer in the world. And all of us left me, Boo Head, and Boo Head brother, Guinea Boo. Yes, that's, that's his real name. Guinea, what's up, fam? Straight laughing like, boy, you a real damn boss. All right, bro. We'll see. It ain't like we didn't believe him. We were just like, Tavares, you better do your homework in class. Like, we're like, why? We're like, what are you, are you serious? But you see it. You see where he went. You see what he did. That boy went and fought the world and became a world champion. He did what he said he was going to do. He came back to the hometown, brought the belt back. Champ was home, man. I mean, Champ was here for real. And my show's been blessed by my homeboy, man. The IBF champion of the world. Former IBF champion of the world. He gonna get that shit back. I promise you. Because he... <laughs> that brother the truth, man. So, I'm, I'm already ready to see what's about to happen. I will be in Daytona on November 20th. I'm gonna go ahead and put my reservations in early. But that's my true story and I'm sticking to it, man. You wanna be on the show? Holler at me. Hit me up on email dot the feature dot cj3 at gmail dot com or hit me up Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at the feature with CJ3. I'm on this thing every single night, Monday through Friday at 9 p.m. Go subscribe right now to the feature with CJ3 on YouTube and on Twitch. The first 10 people. That go subscribe to my channel. Email me. And I will draw your name into going with me this fight. Hit me up. Tell that serious. The first 10 people that subscribe to the show. Email me at thefeature.cj3 at gmail.com. And I will put your name in a draw. And we will pull the names. And we will see who gets to roll with your boy. They told the beach. Going to the fight. Oh, I told y'all I was going to go. I didn't go to the night, to the game in Quincy, where my boy from, to go see Dion and Corey Fuller play tonight. Because I wanted to make sure y'all heard my boy show tonight. This had to happen. But November 20th. 
I will be a damn Daytona doc, and I will be at the fight. <laughs> so go subscribe to my show right now, man. I'm feeling a little, you know, love right now. It's my birthday. It's the it's the show's hundredth episode today. So yeah, um, that's that's the hundredth episode prize. Whoever go subscribe and email me and let me know who they are on my subscription. I will make sure that your name gets into a nice little draw, and we'll go from there. I said top 10, let's do top 15, top 20, however many we can get, but I promise you, the first 10 people, though, y'all got a damn good chance of getting yourselves in that thing. So, if nothing else, man, let's make this thing here happen. As a matter of fact, the first 10 people, that's two times your name goes in the bowl. Anybody after that, it's one time, and... We're going to make it happen from now. So you heard it from here. Heard it from the horse's mouth. I just said it. It's official. I can't make it no realer than that. So I love you guys, man. This is my show. This is my time. It's already been a whole week. Yes, I know. I know y'all were like, damn, I don't want you to go, Cliff. But I got it. I got it. So here we go, man. Um, You know how I do this thing, man. I, I love y'all tremendously, dude. So if nothing else, please. Please, people, stay smart, stay safe out there, stay clean, wash your hands, wash your face, all that good stuff, wear a mask, stay your ass home. I love y'all, it ain't too much you can do about it, holla. my show. Wait a minute. I just forgot something. Even though it's my 100th episode, I forgot to tell y'all who was my next guest on the show. I got to give y'all this one for y'all go any day over. Let me give y'all this piece of information because this is pretty big. My fault on this one. I will take the blame for this one. It's the 100th episode. Anything can happen on the 100th episode. So, on my 100th episode, I'm letting y'all know my next Feature Friday guest. My next Feature Friday guest. I don't know what the hell is wrong with my blue teeth and all that stuff tonight. Everybody just acting up tonight. I don't get it, but we here. But y'all got to tune in, man. Because I got to have me a technical difficulty free show for this motherfucker. It's going down. Confirmed. October 16th. Coming up next week, I got to drop this out ASAP. The head coach of your Florida AM Rattlers, Coach Willie Simmons. College, college football icon, quarterback guru, Clemson's old quarterback, Citadel's old quarterback. Listen, man, this brother here is what a quarterback is all about. Straight from Quincy, Florida, right here, representing on my show, the one and only Willie Simmons will be on the feature. I can't make this up, and I would be so remiss if I didn't tell you about this. Future Feature Friday's guest, man, my boy, Alan Williams, October 23rd, the week after Alan Williams, I mean, after Willie, Willie Simmons, Chief Laurel, Lawrence Rebel, Chief of Police for Tallahassee Police Department on November 13th, and on November 20th, 
Christique Henry, community activist, South City Foundation, Tallahassee peacemaker, businesswoman, realtor. Listen, it's going down on November 20th. And also on December 4th, college football icon, national champion, Florida State University legend. The one and only Peter Ward right here on the feature, man. It's going down. You don't want to miss these shows, man. I'm telling you. I just got to keep doing what I got to do to keep you guys here, man. So it is what it is. Now that y'all know, everybody's good. Please don't forget my boy Willie Simmons, October 16th, head coach of the Rattlers football at Florida a and University. My man, Willie Simmons, coming through on the show. It's real. It can't get no realer than this, man. Happy 100th episode to me, my show, The Feature. Happy 100 to us. And we're going to keep this party rolling and going. It's kind of like the after party of the show right now. You know what I mean? Well, we're going to roll out and enjoy ourselves, man. Y'all have yourselves a good week, man. Good weekend. I'm out for real.